Okay. Alrighty. Wonderful. Okay. So my name is Belkis Cabrera and I do not want to spend a lot of time telling you uh, about me because you can actually read it from my bio. I'm going to put this in full screen and hopefully then it will get, it, it will pop up and you get rid of some of the, of the background. So, um, the as i said this presentation is available online and you know if you want to know a little bit more about me i i am a teacher i was a mentor consultant a professional development facilitator um but really, really what brought me to Slack is my number one identity, which is myself as a teacher and that idea of, of the professional development work that I had done with learning communities. And so I want to speak a little bit about learning communities and I, I hope I don't go too fast. But all I want to say is that obviously effective communication always um, kind of comes to the surface when we talk about learning at a distance or learning online, especially because communi communication is central to the success of a learning community and a learning environment. And one of the things that we know from experts from our own experience as educators or even in, as, as PD facilitators is that learning communities require that people take time to form communication patterns that are meaningful and rewarding. And it's interesting to me because one of the reasons why, I, again, I came to Slack is because the virtual environment um, and the digital world seems to have like this paradigm paradoxical um, effect, which is in terms of communication, which is that it gives us all these tools and allows for all these tools that can um, make communication easier, more urgent, uh, more, uh, I, I guess, accessible, um, and more immediate, not urgent, immediate. But at the same time, it's interesting because it creates this distance. And when you don't have those mediums and those forms and those tools for communication, then all of a sudden there's this disconnect. And actually what we find a lot in the research is people wondering how can I stay connected and build presence with my students in the classroom. And so, of course, I always ask that because I'm really big on building community and a learning community in my class. That's how I speak about the classroom environment. And so before I tell you again a little bit more about Slack, I'd love to know how you communicate with your own students. And you can write this in the chat or you can, you know, please unmute yourself and let me know. How do you communicate with your students? Um, how do students communicate with each other? If you're not in a faculty um, role or a professor role, you could even speak to in terms of your team and your department. How do you usually communicate with each other's, uh, with, with each other and your team? And if you have some uh, a chance or if you've, if you've already thought about this, what are the weaknesses or one weakness and one strength of the method that you use? Okay, so, oh, so, okay, so I have um, you know, a colleague from FIU saying it's fire by Dr. Cabrera that you slack. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, um, Michael, Michael, let's see who else is it here. Um, Jenea, text, call, call through Google Voice. Yes. Um, so I love the idea of calling your students, um, giving them access. I know that that, you know, that can get uh, tricky because we have to build kind of borders, parameters, a little bit of kind of, of you know, uh, space for ourselves as well and for them, right? For for them to also kind of uh, disconnect and 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 um, and to have that opportunity to think and to reflect and to do those kinds of things that they need to do in their personal lives. But great to have for that. Alicia says announcements and emails in class. Awesome. WhatsApp. Okay. So I love that Alicia brought up WhatsApp because um, I thought about WhatsApp. I like Slack better. So if you like WhatsApp, you might like Slack better. I don't know if you've already used Slack. Jeanette, um, email, uh, Google Voice, Remind. Yes, Remind is really big with MDCPS as well. Uh, Re Remind works really, really well. Um, I think one of the biggest differences, again, is is the channel feature for Slack and how you can group people together. Um, uh, let's see, Zoom, Slack. Oh, Janelle uses everything. So awesome. Thank you, Janelle, for sharing that. Uh, I hope I'm not butchering you guys' names. Please correct me if I am and and or forgive me if I am. Um, so thank you so much. Blackboard announcements, absolutely super important. Blackboard announcements, uh, the students check in or Canvas if you're using your Canvas shell. External partners, Slack without external partners. You know, that's really interesting, Emma, because that is what Slack is really kind of tailored 
to, right? And um, and and the the business world is where it really caught fire, and then it kind of trickled into. I guess I should keep the same the same uh, metaphor. It kind of sparked pieces in um, in education in the educational world, or or, or sparked uh, attention in the educational world. Teams, yes, I know. Teams is big, and actually, if we had teams available for our students, I don't think I would be doing this presentation. So thank you, Emma, for bringing that up. Uh, announcements, discussions, forums, Zoom, lots of different ways. Absolutely. Uh, Slack for CIO partner for no for core partners. I'm sorry, um, core partners um, in Ecuador and Canada. Oh, awesome! That's wonderful. I'm again. I'm so glad that people are using Slack. You guys are not going to need this session. <laughs> <laughs> because you're gonna this is such a one-on-one of of how to use slack but thank you guys for sharing i hope you don't mind that i if i move on but please keep on um writing strengths and, and weaknesses especially actually for those of you who are using slack if you want to think about some of the things that um that are not working well for you or that you're still wondering about you know let us know and, and keep those in mind so that we can talk about them so Okay, so why Slack? Okay, so here's what happened. Um, Slack at FIU, uh, a lot of professors were talking about it and it was becoming something that they were gonna implement with Canvas into the LMS shell. And I wanted, this was, uh, by the way, right before the pandemic, um, the you know I was I was thinking about what happens with Canvas when all the students are there. Am I going to have access? I was hearing things buzzing about you know no students weren't able to come in. I had a dual enrollment class, so I want to make sure that I prepare the context for you. I had a dual enrollment class when I when I used Slack, and I was really worried that the dual enrollment students were going to have too much to 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 handle. I wanted to give them something that I thought was really accessible. I only wanted to to give them some one thing extra because they had and I know I know four souls they had the MD CPS system so they had like um the the not, they didn't have teams actually if I'm not mistaken they didn't have teams they had uh another of uh, like a, a forum that was just MD CPS that I couldn't access and then they had um, the Canvas shell for FIU and they had Slack. Um, I, I thought that they were going to be overwhelmed. Incredibly enough, they weren't. And they took to Slack um, like wildfire, to keep with the analogy. So, I mean, with the metaphor, extended metaphor. So, Slack is a channel based messaging platform. You guys already probably know that. Users can organize content in Slack. They can instant message each other in Slack. They can share files, all kinds of files, but there is uh, a limitation on files and, and, and the limit if you have the free account. So just to make sure, I think it's about uh, 60 gigabytes, but I'm not sure I could look that up. You can search for conversations. I love the Slack search features. Um, you can add a lot of apps. And then of course you can conduct voice and video calls. You can do screen sharing features. And actually I love their search their their search uh, feature and their, their bookmarking feature. And I'll show some of that um, as we uh, go along. And so, uh, really, for me, I'm just going to take you to my Slack page because I think it's the best way to just show it. And so if you don't mind, I'm going to pull that up. Okay, so just a couple of things about Slack. So Slack, in Slack, you build um, channels, as I said. And so the channels are right here on this corner right here. Um, I build my channels by week and by theme. So I just want to show it for you. Thank you, Emma, for letting me know um, that you see it. Um, so, so you build your channels. The way that I build my channels, again, um, kind of connects to my modules in, in my Canvas shell. So that students, uh, and again, they're thematic in in in, in in terms of our units and what we're covering. Sometimes I do separate um, the, the channels out. For example, six and seven, the other are together, but then still the other became channel eight, mostly because actually um, six and seven had pieces that went together, that fit together. And then um, eight, which was still the other, kind of moved into more race relations and, um, and, and you know, themes of the other in terms of racial identity. And so uh, six and seven, was really uh, more of a kind of immigrant experience, things like that. So I, I did separate them in the in the in in the Slack room the way that I um, separated them 
in the Canvas shell. And so some of the features, so, so the way this works is, so you go into Slack, you set up these channels, and then you start like post, um, posting questions. And in this particular case, that my first channel was all about introductions because I wanted to see again, you know, how students were interact. And I'm going to tell you ahead of time already that I only, and this is why I said, if I can answer your questions, I only use Slack once and that's why for this presentation actually I started looking to, to for through um, my colleagues I started calling my colleagues who had used Slack at least six to eight uh, different times with different classes so that they could give me some feedback but it's interesting because they found the same thing that I found I think and well and and much more because I collected student voices as well um, and I'll share those with you but basically what I found is that students took to slack rather quickly and I don't know if it's because you know slack was you know uh, connected to discord and they were used to discord from gaming world or because they're just savvy and this is very uh, has a lot of the the features that they're used to in terms of you know uh, social media features because they, they can of course leave you know sticker comments they can have the little chat they can forward messages and all those things that they're used to doing they can have attachments so I'm not sure if that's what it was about but I will tell you this um, the more I use slack in other words as time progressed the more I realized I had to use it and I and here's my 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 absolutely my, Michael, oh yes, very intuitive design. And by the way, I mean, it was engineered by same person as Flickr, right? So, um, and actually he was working on, um, and now his name es escapes me, uh, Stuart, uh, I forgot his name, but anyway, so he was, uh, okay. So, and it's a really cool last name and I forgot it, but, um, Anyway, so he was working on a glitch on an online game and the online game actually didn't work out, but his method for communicating with his colleagues and his, you know, and, and the other people in his staff on that game um, was Slack. He, he created it for um, his interactions with his own team. And so Butterfield, yes, thank you. <laughs> For the win, Michael for the win. Yes, absolutely, Stuart Butterfield. So thank you, thank you, Daniel Stuart Butterfield. Um, and so, um, so anyway, so I think that those elements of, of gaming and, and gamification actually really um, uh, came through in this in this system. And of course, Slack is constantly updating their systems. And there's so much on YouTube that you can find that takes you, you know, to detail by detail through Slack. It's really intuitive and easy to use. And so in this particular introductory session, for example, I asked students to kind of share, I don't even remember what the questions were, but I asked them to share um, their best representation of our time through Hopper or Storch. And I do teach literature, but I always in, in, incorporate art into literature and history into literature. And so, and I also asked them to, to share a poem, song, or a piece of art that best captured their feelings um, or expectations for the course. And this is, you know, um, as you can see what they shared, they were crazy they went like all like they started talking to each other they started responding to each other they found it easy to upload and to share pieces i loved and i'm going to share a couple of the of the pieces that i loved i loved uh being able to bookmark special comments because one of the things that i found is that once you bookmark a piece then you could go here to that like saved items and those um those those comments that you feel are particularly powerful because really what I was doing other than um than getting to know them and getting them to know each other I was always also checking up on their analytical skills right how do they um communicate and logically express their argument about this particular painting and how it connects and so I was already um, kind of you know um uh, looking into language and and the way that they um you know that they express themselves so it was kind of a, a little and and they started seeing that they connected there's a lot of people that picked the same art piece and so they started even talking to each other and 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 um speaking to each other in terms of the pieces that they picked um so so anyway, it was a good assignment, but Slack made it work really well because Slack allowed them to give each other feedback and it was immediate feedback. Um, um, and it was also, you know, again, uh, really creative feedback because they put so much in it.
The other thing that I love about Slack, and I know that I'm going super fast and this sounds kind of crazy, is that you can put um, files into Slack. And so one of the things that happened is that I started, because Canvas started dying, and I do want to say that the LMS started dying, I spent so much working on that LMS and it wasn't used that I started pulling all the pieces from my LMS into Slack so that I could give them the kinds of things that I wanted because this is what they were checking all the time. And I could see when they were in, I could see the little green light, right, that they were on, on, on at this particular time and when they were on and they were asking me a question if I managed to get in which I did because it was usually always um, on my phone because it's direct messaging I was able to troubleshoot in real time right I was able to get back at them and you can see actually you can see a little bit of this um, I'll, I'll show you a little bit I don't want to uh, show you too much about the student because of confidentiality but I do want to show show you a little bit of, of, of an exchange and so um, so I was able to um, put pieces for feedback in here here, uh, videos in here. Um, so Slack again became like the house, like the, the, it almost became like the LMS. The only thing I didn't do in Slack because it didn't allow me to was obviously, um, you know, take formal attendance and give grades, right? The LMS was like the grading space. So here's what we did, like drafting and conversations and thinking and all this stuff. And then um, it, what what happened beyond this space in the LMS is just, okay, so you submit your final space or your, your final piece there, which was kind of, uh, again, unexpected for me. I didn't know that it was gonna, it, it was gonna be that, um, it, it was gonna be that, uh, I, I guess, you know, useful for students. I didn't know that they were gonna um, that they were gonna use it in the way that they used it. Um, I I wanted to show you. So I don't know if uh, Alinaris is one person. So Alinaris is is one of the students who couldn't get into the the Canvas shell because um, actually she wasn't registered on. And so we used. Um, she was able to actually keep up with the class mostly because luckily we had Slack and she was able to give me you know pieces. I was able to give her uh, pieces um, and we were able to have an exchange and she even like she would even give me like her notes for uh, the pedestrian and, and share it with me I mean many of them did that right for their writing and their thinking and and so I was able to give them feedback so again um, Slack became a real oh they started the the moment that I knew that things were changing I guess was the moment where they started kind of responding to each other before I could so they were posting things before I could so so all this stuff happened in Slack and I was really, really happy to use it, but I only used it once because after that I didn't teach again. Um, so what I want to do then is um, actually tell you about what my colleagues found and what they came away with and how, um, how they used it, because I think that you're going to find that a lot more useful than anything that I can say. And so here is what they had to say. And so, um, so you saw my my Slack um, kind of a shell. So they, when I asked them for feedback, I interviewed them and I also asked them through email. And what I found was that the faculty who had used Slack synchronously and asynchronously, and I want to make sure that I'm on time because I think I'm 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 I'm, I'm out. Oh my goodness, no. Um, okay, so the faculty that used it said that Slack was actually very similar to other forms of social media. Again, that intuitive design, uh, it allowed for emojis, all that. Um, it, it actually made students ask questions more because they felt, and this was really interesting, that email was more formal, right? But Slack was more informal, so they could ask questions in a, and, and ask the kinds of questions they wouldn't have asked before, which by the way, when they asked them, I thought, these are really cool crucial questions, but Slack allowed them um, that informality and that space uh, to ask questions. They love the immediacy of communication. They love the fluidity of the discussion. They love the fact that Slack extended the discussion outside of the classroom. So students started posting um, things that were more personal and connections that were more personal in Slack, again, because of that informality, probably. Um, we felt more like a learning community and a team. In, in fact, the, the students actually said that. What surprised most people uh, was that the DM they felt was vital for them, that they actually had a personal connection in the online environment that they didn't foresee. Um, students said that they liked having um, direct access to the professor, 
that the discussion was so much better than any discussion they have in Canvas, even though Canvas has an open form tab that they had never used. So again, um, it seems to work for everyone. It seems to work really, really well. 100% of the students that my faculty colleagues um, surveyed and my own students said that yes, they would keep Slack. Even if they would keep Zoom and Slack, they would definitely keep Slack. Um, so I, there's a lot in here. I'm not going to share this with you because it's online if you want to see it, but I do want um, to share that they felt it was more organic. And I do want to share that people were using it in very interesting ways. And one of the ways that um, the fun ways that they were using it is they were actually doing moving movie Slack events where the the Zoom was the Zoom was used to showcase the movie, but then Slack was used to have the conversation about the, the movie. So that worked really, really beautifully as well. Um, and then they started doing live Slack sessions um, and they found that those were super um, uh, lively. And for some reason, again, Slack made it, and I think it's that, again, that informality of it, made it even more, more people contributed to the conversation. And so, and I know that I'm over my time. And so uh, the only other thing that I have for you is actually for you to share your experiences with Slack or how you envision using Slack or any questions you have. I know there's a lot. This is a lot. Um, it's really hard to do a presentation on Slack in, in 20 minutes because there's so many things you can do with it. Um, but I do want to, uh, you know, turn it over to you for your feedback, your comments, and again, your contributions. So let me do that. Does anybody want to start us off? Unmute yourself and go ahead. Belkis, I, I want to say this is Michael Alendi from FIU. Um, after meeting with you, I decided to use Slack for a myriad of different reasons. Uh, one of them was because students rarely check their student email. Um, yes. Announcements, even for me, felt just infrequent. Um, and so I went, I used Slack after we spoke, and now I've used it in six semesters in over four wow. different courses. My students love it. It's incredible. I use it just for announcements. Um, I use it for group communication. Everything that they turn in, they turn in on Canvas. So that that's connected to my grade center. Um, and I think something that you, that you didn't mention that's insane about Slack that I know that you're you're excited about is all of those great features except for screen sharing are a part of their free like for their yes. free service. So yes. Um, yeah, yes. I use a free yes. version of Slack in all of my classes and uh, my students love it. I had a student even in my in a high flex course say, you don't need to use, uh, you don't need to create a WhatsApp for this class. Um, you can just use Slack. So yeah. it's a phenomenal tool. It replicates almost everything that you all, um, the other tools that you all mentioned in the in the chat. Yeah, and it goes a little further. Absolutely, and I agree. And I think that if I had to use only one, because I didn't want to, if I, you know, I don't want to bombard students with new um, technology. And even though, you know, some of them I know it, not all of them use WhatsApp, right? Not all of them use, you know, whatever it is that 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 we're using, um, GroupMe or whatever it is. But um, if I had to invest in one, Slack would be it so far. So far, that could be it. Any other questions? I know that, I, I, or comments, I know that there's a lot of people that use, thank you so much, Michael, for that. And um, uh, Alicia, did you want to talk about how you use Slack or, oh, oh, actually, no, she asked me a question. So are you teaching class in Slack or is it additional to Blackboard? Okay, so I was teaching in Canvas and it was additional. So I took them through, um, um, you know how to use Slack in a tutorial that I actually put on my Canvas shell or my in I would have put it on my Blackboard shell LMS. We didn't have Blackboard, we used Canvas. But even again, even with Canvas, which I think is I like it even more than Blackboard, um, there was no substitute for the kinds of exchanges and the kinds of ways that they use the system. Um, it's more than a discussion board because um, I, students actually, um, it, it, I, I think what happens with it is that students, you can group students, by the way, in Slack. So if you if you really get really creative and, and you want to do this, some of my faculty friends, what they do is they create 
communities, you know, like if you have a lot of, of, of students, I have a history professor who has over 120 students. And what she does is she creates little communities in Slack. And then you're part of that community through the whole um, time that you're in the class. And you have a cohort of friends that you're constantly and peers that you're constantly bouncing ideas from. So Slack allows you to do, um, I think, more than discussion boards, but also to see it in a way that's really accessible. I didn't show you the search feature. You can search through Slack and you can search for um, specific uh, people and what they said, uh, specifically words and what they said. Um, and so you can piece things together in a really, really neat way. Um, and students also have that ability to be able to do that. And since it's separated into um, channels, they can go back and forth into those channels. And it looks just really nice on the phone in a way, again, that um, the LMSs haven't been able to replicate. Like on the on the phone, Slack looks exactly how it looks on the web version, right? So beautiful um, in terms of what it can do. Sure, sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Any other questions that I missed? I'm so sorry because I wasn't paying attention to the questions, but I don't want to take a lot of time. And I think we're way over and I apologize, it's 11.30. So I'll, I'll pass it over to Leslie. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Cabrera, for that amazing uh, presentation. And, um, you know, I mentioned I want to talk to you. So I want some time with you because I feel like I need something better. Um, as one of the faculty from FIU mentioned, something better than announcements and email for the LMS. So please, everybody, we've posted some links. There is a session at 11.30. There is the noon session with Richard Blanco. We posted the links to get there. And Mateus posted the link for you to be able to share your feedback <clears throat> and get additional information and comment on these. Right, Alicia? This should be a CIOL workshop with like more time. Like I want to learn how to use this. So I'm going to talk hey. to Hanati myself and volunteer let me, know, let, me, <laughs> let me know let me know and yeah that's what would be really neat right to play with the tool like go out yeah um sign in get yourself an account and start playing with the tool start setting it up it's easy to use again i mean there's so much better stuff on youtube that can take you through it than i than i can mm -hmm. but i can show you my shell and, and i can show you yeah. what i did and why i did it Excellent. so thank you Excellent. guys thank you thank you everyone for for attending and thank you dr cabrera thank you for having me bye guys see you around bye, -bye.